What's going on guys? I got a pretty cool video for you today. We made an entire team out of suspended players from last season and honestly the team is stacked. As you can see here the team name is Central Suspensions. I'll show you guys the logo here. I decided to go with the snake. I felt like it kind of just fit the theme there of suspended players. Also to actually use the Slytherin colors so if any of you guys are Harry Potter fans you should like that. Uh, right here's a look at the home jersey. Honestly I feel like it turned out pretty solid. The way there is all right. It's not as good. An alternate honestly might be my favorite. You can see we use black there's the main color i think that actually is probably the best one also i'll show you guys the details quickly here so central suspensions play by play team names the snake unfortunately uh suspensions is not available suspended arena which would actually be kind of insane a suspended arena if you think about it and next year guys we're going to start with a team as you can see there the Ottawa centers are still the lowest rated team by far 81 overall i think the next lowest is like detroit 83 so just makes it more fair i think we sub out ottawa and like I was saying, the team we have is pretty nasty. Just look at the bottom of the screen there. Top players, Connor McTavid, Nikita Gujarov, and Alex Ovechkin. Are you kidding me? Like, a lot of really good players honestly got suspensions last year. And as you can see, this team's rating is actually 91 overall, which I think makes them the highest rated team in the league. Next closest is Tampa there at 90. So I think they do have a very good shot here winning the Stanley Cup. And real quick, guys, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a domain, website, or online store, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to help you build your online presence and run your business. So if you guys are looking to start a website, look no further than Squarespace. They have a ton of different custom templates and layouts you can choose from, one that will surely fit your need. They also have a lot of tools for SEO and analytics that will really help you drive people to your website. And this will allow you to look behind the scenes and see what's working and what's not. So head on over to Squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to start, go to Squarespace.com slash TacticsHD to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And as you guys can see here, obviously Team Stats is champion. And we've actually already made one big change with this team. So coaching staff is actually a new feature that's even going to affect just these like franchise mode sims. So decide to fire a head coach and promote the assistant coach to interim head coach, Coop here. As you can see, he's a generalist, so he kind of works well for everybody. The last guy we had just wasn't really a great team fit. I think he had like 55% team fit. This guy at least has a 63%. As you can see, Ovechkin and Carlson both maxed out. Now, 8% extra isn't you know a huge gain, especially since this guy's overall is a B, where I think the old coach was an A, but it also just helped us get better chemistry on our line, which I think honestly was worth it. I'll show you guys what the old coach looked like. Again, he was a really good coach. I think it was Reinhardt here, A- minus overall. But I'm not sure why his team specialist has generalist now. It did say defense. As you can see there, 56% team fit. Giordano fits perfectly, but I just felt like we weren't getting great chemistry. And actually on our lines now, it's pretty good. So next year, guys, I'll show you the roster. Like I was saying, it's pretty stacked. We should have a very good season. First line there, Ovi McDavid Kucherov is actually the best right winger, best center, and best left winger in the game. So pretty unreal having them all in the first line. I'm hoping they've all put up like 100 plus points. Eichel, Malik, and Voracek on the second line. Now, they are getting a minus one, which kind of sucks. Domi, Johansson, and Kaji on the third line. And then Wilson, Thornton, and Gord on the fourth line. So, I was actually looking at it. We could switch Malkin in for McDavid. Get a plus three there on the first line. But, I kind of just, like, there's still going to be a minus one there. I'd rather just have the best players on that same line. Also, too, I think I saw something else where if I go like this. So, I move Malkin, or the whole second line to the first. I actually get plus one on both. But then, like, our best players are playing a little bit less minutes, so it's just not worth it. Like, I'd rather just take a minus one, make sure our best players are out there as much as possible. Defense here, though, all gets plus ones, and very solid, too. Giordano, Eric Carlson, Charlie McAvoy, Schmidt, Matheson, Gudas. Obviously, some of these guys, like, McAvoy got spent in the playoffs. Gudas, everyone knows. I think he got a couple suspensions last year. And you know what I just realized, guys? Not only do we have the best center, left wing, and right wing, we also have the best goaltender in Carey Price. 91 overall there. Now, he was the only goalie to get suspended last year. He got suspended for one game for skipping the All-Star game, so decided to put in the lowest rated goalie in the game as our backup, as really, like, that's the best way to do it. There was no second goalie that got suspended, so if we do use our backup. Langman here, 45 overall. Good chance we're going to get beat that game, but I feel like the team in front of them is so good. We should be okay. So, also want to quickly show you guys all these special teams here. First power play unit is actually all forwards. Malcolm McDavid, Kucherov, Voracek, Obi. That was what the computer actually suggested. So, who knows? I feel like they're going to go off. And then even the second one, Giordano Carlson. Two of the better offensive defensemen in the game. Four-man power play there. Penalty kill. Three-man. I think it's all actually good. No negatives. Just that second line there. But again... I want those three best players on that first line, and I'm hoping they just have unreal years. Maybe, like, honestly, 120 points each. That'd be sick. HL team here as well. I want to show you quick. So the first line there is also suspended players. we got Tyler Bertuzzi, Adam Lowry, and Zach Hyman. Top D as well, Burrowicki and Bertuzzo. Burrowicki, I was actually noticing uh, when I was looking at the list of suspended players, got suspended, and then I think, like, three days later, so probably when he just came back from the last suspension, got suspended again. 
Like, I didn't realize that. Like, who does that? I thought that was so funny. Another thing I noticed too, actually, was because it's based on how much you make, McDavid only got a like, two game suspension last year and it still cost him over $100,000. Like, imagine one bad hit or whatever and it costs you 100K. Like, I just thought that was kind of insane to think about. So, also here, guys, I want to show you the captaincy of this team. You can probably guess it, but McDavid's going to be wearing the C and then the two alternates here. Um, we have Ovi and Kucherov again, just our three best players, best players at each position. I think it makes the most sense. And right here, I just want to show you guys the ratings for offense, defense, and goaltending. I'm kind of curious actually how goaltending will work because we literally have the highest rated goalie in the game and the lowest rated goalie as the backup. So we're going to test it out here, see what happens. 70 goaltending. Wow. So the backup really does bring it down quite a bit. That looks like it's probably just like the actual average. 100 offense. So that's not quite the average, but... That is pretty insane. I didn't realize we were that good offense. And then 93D is honestly really solid. Also, you can see McDavid wearing our jerseys. The black ones look as good with the dark background, not going to lie. But um, I think they're honestly pretty sharp overall. So we can start with the sim here to see just how good a team of suspended players is. Honestly, I'm thinking we could win the cup. And check this out, guys. The preseason just ended and we didn't lose a single game in regulation. Only Florida there beat us in a shootout. So hopefully that's a good sign. I know a lot of people think if you do well in the preseason, you're going to do bad in the regular season. We'll see uh, whether or not that holds true. 20 minutes later. And look at this, guys. We just got our first big trade alert of the season. Jason Zucker there to Carolina for Honka and two third round picks. Honestly, I feel like Minnesota should have gotten more than that. And we're actually about two weeks away here from the deadline. A little bit over 500, which is honestly where we've been pretty much all year. Two to like four games above 500. Minnesota then trades Spurgeon Koivu, Anderson of first, and Seneshin uh, to Boston. So I guess Minnesota's rebuilding here. First round pick and good Branson for Dylan and Heed. Doesn't really seem like too much. Obviously, with the trade deadline coming here, lots of trades are being made. We look to be playing a pretty good here, though. We're starting Boychuk for two second round picks. Not too, too bad there for Islanders. Like I was saying, we were like two to four games above 500 all season. Now, we're seven. So, we've actually been playing pretty good here in the month of February. Hopefully, can kind of keep this up. As right now, I'd say we're around a wild card spot. I'm not too, too confident. And I feel like this team... The highest rated team in the league like we need to at least make the playoffs even if we don't win the Stanley Cup so 33 24 and 5 they're at the deadline actually pretty similar record there to the Blue Jackets come on and we're in a wild card spot 71 points McDavid under a point per game with Kucherov and Ovechkin as his wingers I don't get that that line also has a plus one so that means it's a 93 and 95 to 93 I feel like they should be doing so much better than that. Just It does not make sense to me, but we'll keep simming here. Hopefully, like at least we get into the playoffs, and as we all know, at that point, anything can happen. And check this out, guys. Boston just fleeced LA. They got to fully in a third for a first-round pick and Bacchus. It honestly probably cost a first-round pick just to get rid of Bacchus' contract. So the fact they got to fully and a third on top of that, that's a nice trade. And we're now at the end of the regular season. Record there, 44-33-5, and five, so pretty solid. 93 points. Like That really should be a playoff spot. I noticed to our AHL team, Played really well. And we actually get a division spot, so that's awesome. We're playing the Bruins there in the first round, who just added to Foley. And McDavid did finish with over a point per game, so that's awesome to see. I really thought, though, like that top line would all have 100 plus points. So to see not even a single one of them get 100 is a little bit disappointing. Like, I don't know, maybe just there wasn't the chemistry. Malkin 74 on the second line, Ovi 73. Ovi only had 26 goals. What was going on with Alex Ovechkin? That makes no sense. Let's look at his career stats. I don't know if Ovi's ever had that little of goals, ever, in his entire career. No, he's the least amount of goals he's ever had is 32 goals. So, somehow playing with McDavid and Kucherov is his worst goal scoring season ever. Uh, shooting 10.4% is not even, it's not terrible. Like, I don't know, I'm not trying to figure out what happened there. Kucherov 71, like that's what, almost half of what he had last year. Vorchek 70, so a big year for him. Carlson, 66 for D-Man, solid. Eichel there, Johansson, Kadri. So the third liners, I think, all did what you'd expect, even though they're better players. They're getting third line mats, obviously. They can only produce so much, but yeah, overall, not too bad. I'm wondering, because this is a suspended team. Who had the most penalty minutes? Tom Wilson, 62, and Gouda, 60. The guys that get suspended a lot had the most penalty minutes. No surprise there. McAvoy, almost 60, trying to be one of the Bash brothers. Uh, respect that. So goaltending, I'm actually very curious about this. Langman, they started him for 21 games. 11 and 8 it's not terrible, a .864 and a 3.97, so, like, Price's save percentage should probably be more than .3 better than a guy who's overall, he's literally double, actually, technically more than double then, that's kind of crazy, and, like, the win percentage there, I don't think it shows it, but 33, 25, 11, 8, 
So what would that be? 33 and 24 is what that would equal out to. So Langman's is technically just better, although Price does have the 5 OT losses, so I think Langman's is actually better. Like, that's insane. Price only had two shutouts. Really weird year here. Some of the stats are getting, like, I don't know. And next year, guys, I actually want to take a quick look at the AHL team, just to see if those three spending guys all did awesome. Lowry, 62, leading scorer. Hyman, 59. Bertuzzi, only 52. That's kind of surprising, but... Like, Senators AHL team's not too bad. You got Brown, Formington, Balsers, all playing really well. Also, of course, we'll take a look here and see who finished the entire league with the lead in scoring. I feel like the Ovechkin on Washington's probably going to win them Reese Richard. McDavid on Edmonton, 110. He's got Dreisaitl with them, but that doesn't make any sense. I'm wondering, what was his time on ice? 21 minutes. I want to check our McDavid. Um, Ravjilov, 104. Sagan, 103. Dallas always sims so well. Kane, Ovechkin there. I was right. 52 goals, 92 points. Doesn't make sense. Duchesne, huge year on Nashville. Bergeron, Ben. That Dallas line's insane. McDavid, he only averaged one minute less on our team. I don't get it. That's, I don't know. It's something going on there. I assume, actually, Sagan tied uh, Ovi there. So I don't know if there's a tiebreaker. Sagan has more points, so they both get it, honestly. I forget the rule there. I see uh, Nyquist. 69 points, 40 goals. Nice. Also, want to take a look and see where we finished the entire league. So... We know we got third in the division there. Toronto wins the league, 110 points. You got five teams there, 100 plus. Edmonton, 101. Probably the biggest shocker. Even Columbus, too. Like, their young goalies are going to have to play so well for that to happen. We finished 10th, so pretty solid season, I think. And let's see. There's one more team. Minnesota trades away Spurgeon, Zucker. I think they trade away Koivu. I thought they were rebuilding. They still squeak in the playoffs. Tampa Bay misses. Winnipeg gets in with the 19th spot, so... Yeah, very, very strange year here for sure. LA finished last. Not really surprised. Montreal second last. That's a bit more surprising. So we get started with the playoffs now, guys. Like I was saying, first matchup is Boston. So let's actually take a look here at their lines. We know they added Tyler to Foley. Curious if they maybe added anybody else. Okay, so Boston's pretty stacked. I knew they added to Foley. They also signed Mr. Game 7 and Justin Williams. And I forgot that they were the team that traded for Koivu there. So that means that they also have Spurgeon. With Char on the second pair. Like, that top four is nasty. Carlo on the bottom. Ras Kalak. This is a really good Boston team. Like, I still like our team better. Their first line, almost as good as ours. But we definitely have the depth there. I'd say our defense is about as good. We got Price and Net. But the first round matchup, like, starting us off is already going to be super, super tough. Again, like we always say, anything can happen. The Sim is just so, so fluky. So, let's see. First game, we lose in Boston there in OT. Keep it close, though. 2-1. Second game, 5-2 loss. We got a win here. Going back to, I don't know where we'd be, like the NHL head offices as a suspension team. Win at least one game. Come on. There we go. 4-3 win. And 3-2 loss. So we got to win the next three straight. This Boston team stacked. It's going to be tough. Come on. There we go. 3-0 win. 4-3 loss. I thought we maybe had some hope. Push a game seven, unfortunately. Losing six there. Highest rated team in the league. Just, uh, I don't know, the team mix, whatever it was, too many guys that play the game a bit too dirty, didn't work out. <laughs> well, this is amazing, guys. Even though we got knocked out first round, we get the first overall pick via the Sharks pick. I forgot, because we take over for Ottawa, we get their pick. So, we'll be adding Alexis Lafreniere here to the suspension team. I don't know if he's ever gotten suspended in uh, the QMJHL or not, but nope. definitely going to welcome him aboard the squad. And, uh, you know, that's kind of funny. Scranton there with the Calder Cup champions. And in the NHL, Calgary Flames actually won the Stanley Cup. Malkin, 5.6 games. So he was doing his part in the playoffs. Unfortunately, just the rest of the boys around him could not get it done. So take a look at the playoff tree here. See who Calgary had to get through. Arizona actually in the first round went to seven. Then they had the Battle of Alberta in the second round, beating the Oilers in five. We'd love to see that in real life. They haven't really had a great playoff series between those two teams in a while. Stars there. Best of seven as well, and then they beat the Bruins in six. So at least we lost to the Eastern Conference champions in the Boston Bruins, but honestly, it still hurts. Like our team, we deserved better. We're a better team than that. I saw McDavid actually grew there to a 95. So President's Trophy, Toronto, you know all those awards. Individual here, McDavid, Art Ross, Radulov with the heart. Riley gets the James Norris, Sagan Lady Bing. Hughes got the Calder over Kako, so that's interesting. Back on Con Smythe. I'm wondering too if like our coach, he was interim head coach, and we did pretty good. I'm wondering if maybe. He got the Jack Adams, Vasilevsky, Vesna, as well. He got the William Jennings, Jarmelson, Bill Masterton, and Bodie on Columbus actually gets Jack Adams. So he's like the, I don't know, makeshift Tortorella, I guess. Columbus did a lot better than I expected, so that's pretty fair. O'Reilly with the Selkie back-to-back -back years. Radulov, Ted Lindsay, and then Ovi there with Maurice Richard. So 
Unfortunately, no awards. Honestly, I expected so much better from the suspension team. Like, we were so stacked. Just want to quickly here check the AHL awards. Formington, outstanding rookie, so that's kind of sick. At least we get some award, even though he wasn't even one of our suspension players. And team awards, we had a pretty good record, unfortunately. Wasn't good enough to win the division or anything like that. So, that's going to be it, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I think it's kind of cool now, actually, having the coaches and the line chemistry as another kind of factor in with these creative teams you make. Because even like this team here that's stacked, you gotta make sure you can work it with a coach or whatever to get the best out of your players. So it should be a lot of fun moving forward. I actually have a couple more ideas for alumni teams I'm gonna be doing soon, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.